Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. So Watches and Wonders 2024 has concluded. We have seen some novelties. A lot of people have noticed that uh, many brands have restricted the number of, uh, of new uh, releases. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's by design. Uh, there was just an article in Bloomberg where so several CEOs uh, are pointing out that uh, there is a glut of unsold watches at uh, retailers, that the secondary market is coming down significantly. And uh, so it's not a good time for brands to bring out more iterations of the same things and more uh, products while they have to uh, control a bit uh, the retail side of things to avoid coming back to big uh, discounts, which uh, is not synonymous of uh, luxury. And uh, we're going to see that uh, a lot of brands, I think like uh, Zenith, Parmigiani, uh, I think GLC is going to suffer from it uh, eventually, the, the Richemont brands. Uh, I think all, all brands in general, Tudor certainly, uh, I, I see uh, the same models uh, in uh, available uh, right away in all the, the windows. And so they have reduced the amount of uh, new product, which I think is, uh, is a sane thing uh, to do. And, uh, you know, you see uh, all the videos about Watches and Wonders. Some vloggers are extremely uh, enthusiastic and it's a bit uh, bizarre to see, uh, you know, that nice guy, uh, Andrew McCutcheon of Time and Tide, for example, the way he interviews the, the new CEO of Zenith about uh, the brand and the watches. I effing love Zenith. That's good news. I love <laughs> Zenith. I think uh, he ought to calm down a, a little bit. I mean, it's nice to convey uh, enthusiasm. Uh, but uh, Zenith, I think, has a bit of a problem on their, on their hand and they are very well uh, aware of it. Uh, they, they got a bit too excited uh, from the success of their Corona Master Sport. Just to take one example, I don't want to single them out. Uh, I think overall the industry is in the same uh, situation. And, and look, I take no pleasure of seeing that because I think we all want to believe we are sitting on assets uh, with our watches, but it will touch everything all the way up to uh, the, the mighty uh, Rolex. If you need to sell some watches or if you want to consolidate, it will get a lot harder in 2024. So we want everything to do well. Uh, and it's the same thing in every industry. Same thing for, for finance. It's just the result of uh, higher interest rates, higher inflation and uh, less money uh, available for discretionary consuming. Having said uh, all that, there were still some very nice watches. And my favorite of the show, the one that warms my heart, is uh, from uh, uh, the brand uh, Gégeur Le Coultre, GLC, uh, which uh, I had a bit of a rant about because mainly uh, of their entry-level le models and uh, the abundance of, uh, uh, of them uh, and the, the higher prices uh, that they, they try to uh, gouge the customers on. Uh, finally, they uh, focus uh, their attention this year on their best watch to me. Uh, and I wish there were more watches uh, from GLC in that, uh, that range of watches. Uh, it is the uh, Duometre, uh, which came out in the, the mid-2000s. Uh, and uh, the previous iteration is still in the, the shop windows, but now they come with a further development of this line of uh, watches with four amazing models. And what I really love to see is a brand new case, uh, more rounded, beautiful details, gorgeous uh, lugs. I think it's really what uh, GLC needed, and I hope they will roll it out to uh, other models like the, the Polaris, for example. I think the straight type of, uh, of uh, case size, the case flanks, uh, makes the watches uh, less elegant and uh, looking uh, larger than they, they should. So this uh, new Duomet, there's a steel blue dial with the moon phase, great. The most affordable of the of the, the new models, if you can call it that, it's still a, a lot of uh, a lot of dough. Uh, then you have the monopusher chronograph with a moon that's that's new and that's uh, really great. There's a platinum and a rose gold. The platinum has the salmon dial, rose gold maybe a bit more uh, reasonable. And then you have a new 
Helios tourbillon, triple axis, gorgeous integration into the Duometre uh, concept. Not a big fan of tourbillon in general, but that one is uh, really sublime uh, with a little window on the side of the, the case. Uh, really a fantastic uh, lineup. And it's great that they focused just on, on that. We'll see about the, the pricing, right? It's very high. And I don't know if, uh, yeah, th those uh, Richemont brands won't have to give in at some point discounts again at the boutiques. Uh, same for IWC. IWC, uh, yeah, brought out uh, the heat again. Uh, last year, the focus was on the Ingenieur, highly priced. And this year, the focus is on the Eternal Calendar. None of us will be able to testify that it actually works, but we have to take their word on it. I trust the Germans to know what they're doing. Uh, really, uh, really beautiful, uh, beautiful watch. And uh, likewise, uh, speaking of Germans, uh, Longer only pro came up with uh, one uh, focus, uh, the uh, Honey Gold uh, uh, Datograph uh, Lumen. Uh, just superb, uh, superb watch. Very limited uh, in production, of course, and a uh, highly, uh, extremely high price. Uh, I think they also came up uh, this year with the Datograph up down blue dial. They don't make many blue dials, so it's very special for, for the brand. And that's the one I'd love to, uh, to own as well. Uh, Cartier had a very strong show, a lot of uh, new models. They bring back the Monopusher Tortue. Uh, the, the one that really uh, collectors want uh, is the previous iteration uh, where the movement was uh, developed by uh, a young F. Pigeon, well, a younger F. Pigeon and Denis Flagellet and I think uh, Vienny Alter as well uh, may have had its, his hands on that one. The new movement is different and I've already heard some people complaining the Etacron for the regulation and uh, some of the wheels didn't look... Uh, uh, very uh, appealing, refined. Uh, we'll have to see the final product. Maybe it's just the uh, the pre-production uh, uh, prototypes that we we saw at the show. But it's it's a nice model and it's a bit larger than the previous version, which was a bit small uh, on the wrist. So quite nice to see uh, the uh, dual time uh, comes into the, uh, the the Santos, the sporty uh, Santos. Quite nice. Again, the movement base, I think, is uh, Celita. Um, maybe not so exciting there. Uh, more exciting, I think, is the, uh, the, the Santos Dumont with a beautiful burgundy dial and the time being read uh, in reverse or so challenging our conception of how time uh, passes, how we read time. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so th those were, I think, the, the, the standouts. Chopard brought out a new Alpine Eagle with sort of a skeletonized dial. I'm not a big fan of these, uh, but I like the, uh, the more dressier pieces. Uh, the one with the green dial was quite nice uh, as well. And, you know, the, the hit that uh, Raymond Weil uh, got uh, last year, the GPHG 23, the Millesim, uh, now has a moon phase. Gosh, the moon phase is the it thing. Every brand comes up uh, with one. We were expecting to see it on the 1908 uh, dress watch of uh, Rolex, their new uh, line for, since last year. Uh, but instead, they came up with a platinum version with a guilloche dial, the other big trend in the, in the business. A guilloche dial, uh, uh, engine turned, I think it's a handmade one, beautiful uh, as well, and more exciting, I think, than the... Uh, the GMT with the black and gray bezel, bit of a parts bin uh, kind of a offering. All the rest was above $40,000. So uh, Rolex uh, also, I guess, uh, li limiting a bit the production of the, uh, the, the, the steel sports, uh, I suppose, and calming down the, the market a bit. Even the mighty Rolex uh, might see a, a big drop. And I think overall, the, the consumer is a bit more... Uh, wary of uh, what's, what's coming out. Uh, certainly they are with Tudor also coming out with less model, giving people what they want with the, the GMT. We'll have to see it. I'm, I'm not sure about the colors yet. And uh, although it's the thing we wanted for the past six years, uh, you know, six years ago, it was the GMT and the 58. Now they come together. Uh, it, there's something feels a bit, uh, yeah, a bit played out uh, with, with Tudor and they have a big lot of 
watches on the on the market might be a tough year so good for them not to release too many uh, watches that doesn't mean that all these brands will not release other things outside of watches and wonders to get uh, more impact uh, maybe uh, and patek philippe uh yeah different colors different uh, metals i think uh, standing out were those uh leather br leather straps that have a denim look i actually like the look of it but i don't know if i would have put that uh, up front and center it would have been nice to see those maybe in the in the catalog like a little surprise a little nugget for those who who want that uh, but they, they do look uh, very good on the on the chronograph and uh, they, it almost outshines the fact that they added a date to the world timer. How, how unusual is that? And uh, I think welcome. I think when you're well, you want a world timer, the date is quite important to see uh, on it. Uh, less exciting to me is the fact that they uh, discontinued the steel 5164 dual time Aquanote to bring it back in white gold, make more margin per unit make less watches it's a bit of a middle finger i think to uh to the people who wanted that model uh, certainly to me um probably i will never have it but who uh cares uh, really uh and, and i think in, in the end the most interesting things that i've seen were from the uh, independence uh, i'll put a few pictures a few videos uh if you want to see more of those uh check out independent watcher um, the uh, best distributor of uh, indie watches uh, here in, uh, based here in Hong Kong. And uh, they were over there and uh, they shared with me some videos. And uh, wow, there's some really cool things, amazing finishing, uh, beautiful uh, uh, new, new watches, some new ideas. And the return of a great watchmaker, uh, you know, of course, uh, Philippe Dufour. Well, on the same kind of level, there, there is uh, Nicolas Delalois, uh, he has been working for Patek Philippe. Uh, um, he launched his brand uh, some 20 years ago or, or so, uh, independent brand, and he's coming uh, back to the forefront uh, with, uh, with his watches and uh, his brand. So it's great to see that he's still working at the Patek Philippe Museum, uh, I believe, at the same time. So uh, look out for, for it if you want to... Uh, Put your money into uh, something uh, a bit more substantial. And I think substance is what people are looking for now after three, four years of buying a bit uh, everything. And sometimes uh, things of uh, less substance, more show than, uh, than real uh, watchmaking. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you noticed at the show. What were your, your likes? Of course, there are many more brands that I should be uh, talking about. But those were a bit my... Uh, my thoughts, my highlights of the show. Bye-bye, guys.